Good afternoon. Thank you for staying with us and not leaving. <laughs> so, um, so my name is Julia Greco. I'm here with Caroline Chesank. We are from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Uh, we, uh, we will uh, discuss about the relationship between violence and subjective well-being uh, amongst a, a specific group of the population, which is um, Congolese and Burundian refugees living in Yaraguzu refugee camp in Tanzania. So, well, the outline is quite straightforward. So, uh, as a background uh, uh, of the study, so the, the effects of violence and conflict and displacement are on the overall uh, life of individuals, and they uh, often affect the life of individuals in a negative way. Uh, employment, education, loss of economic assets, loss of uh, 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 network and relationships, uh, deterioration of health, uh, all of these uh, are con can be considered, um, war and violence can be considered as a social uh, bad rather than social good. In the literature, uh, victims of, of violence have consistently reported a lower level of happiness and life satisfaction, although uh, compared to non-victims. However, there are not many studies yet that are really understanding the impact of violence uh, on subjective well-being in uh, conflict settings. So, so far we've found five studies only, so if you know more, uh, please do share. So just uh, key statistics for those of you who are not familiar with, the, uh, with refugees and, and conflicts. There are more than 82 million forcibly, forcibly displaced people in the whole world, and the vast majority are hosted in low and middle income countries. Um, in, we are focusing on a specific refugee camp in Tanzania, uh, near Ruzu, which hosts uh, around 80,000 Congolese refugees who have been there for a long time, since the 1996. So some of the refugees that we have interviewed actually were born in the camp, so that has been all their life. And 60,000 Amburundia refugees who arrived more recently in 2015. So this is a big uh, difference that is important to keep in mind. The camp is operated by the UN uh, with the Tanzania Ministry of Home Affairs and the International Rescue Committee are providing all of the support in terms of uh, violence um, response services and all of the educational settings. The, just to add, the, the uh, Tanzania government has a very strict uh, encampment policy. Refugees are not allowed to leave the camp. They're not allowed to, uh, they're not, there is no free, freedom of movement. They, they cannot work. So they don't have a job, they don't have an income. Um, so they, they are confined in that space. So the, our sample uh, is, um, are, these are refugees who live in the camp and they sort of volunteers in schools to be teachers. But that's not a proper job. They are not paid a full salary, just a compensation. Oh, sorry, please, I'm going back. Um, next the slide. So how did we measure subjective well-being with two variables, the life satisfaction uh, on a scale one to five. No, we did not use the country ladder. Um, and then we, uh, we asked the question about happiness, how you felt yesterday in terms of your happiness on a scale did, did one you to five. The, did you choose the five scale one for a reason? Yes, because it was more manageable cognitively speaking. Okay. Yeah, because it's curious. Had, yeah, one, one to 10, we tested it and it was just too, too diverse. Much. Yes. And also because they were phrased as not, not at all satisfied to completely satisfied with number and the, and the wordings. So not at all satisfied, a little bit satisfied, fairly satisfied. So if you have it on a scale one, you, 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 you cannot use the words. Got it. Yeah. And happy was the same, very happy, completely happy, not happy at all. And the question was translated in Kirundi and Kiswahili. Uh, so what were our hypotheses? We wanted, so in general, we wanted to explore the association between our responding experience of violence as a life experience of violence on subjective well-being. So what, how does violence impact on your subjective well-being and the determinants of life satisfaction and happiness for this particular group of people? Uh, these were some of the specific objectives that we look at, uh, for example, the, we, we, the, determ the determinant of life satisfaction and happiness, the relationship between violence and subjective well-being and how they're different by gender, age, educational status and income, although income, of course, it wasn't very uh, relevant in this context. Then we wanted to look at the association between subjective well-being and experience of trauma with the specific PTSD um, uh, variable and then to look at the factors associated with subjective well-being using uh, random forests as a variable. And now I'll pass it over to Caroline for the 
quantitative stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much, Julia. So uh, for the statistical methods, our data was obtained from a violence prevention program that was conducted between 2018 to 2020. So this is longitudinal data. So we have repeated measures. So in November, that was the baseline. Then in June 2019, that was the midline. And then we have uh, the end line that was in January 2020. So main factors associated with our outcome of interest, we used univariable and multivariable linear regression. But now let's remember, we have different schools and different teachers. So we use linear mod mixed models to account for clustering that is introduced by that. We also performed some additional analysis so that we could see whether we could obtain similar results when we use various algorithms. So our data is partly cross-sectional and also longitudinal. So our results are not going to be causal. So our data was collected from between seven primary and secondary schools, and we had approximately 20 teachers per school at each and every interview. So our key variable was questions on subjective well-being. Welcome and welcome the children as well. And we had uh, other key variables such as the lifetime experience of physical and sexual violence. We also had uh, the experience of trauma variable, which was measured using the Hover Trauma Questionnaire. And finally, the demographic and background characteristics. We need to know the marital status of the teachers, the age, the number of children sleeping in household, etc. So we had 1,666 observations collated through the time period, and the median age of teachers was 31. So this was quite a young population. The proportion of males in our study was roughly three times that of males and uh, that of females, and the proportion of teachers who reported to have PTSD symptoms was 8.8. 84%. So two thirds of the teacher population were Congolese residents, or they were from Congo, and the rest were from Burundi. Then we had more than half of the teachers being victims of physical violence, approximately 11% being victims of sexual violence, and approximately 45% being perpetrators of uh, physical violence. And we do not have any missing data in our outcome variables. So these are the summary statistics based on the three time periods. So when we look at the mean life satisfaction on a scale of one to five, we see 2.35, 2.32, 2.24. So it's quite steady throughout the three time periods. And when we, uh, when we convert that to the standardized scale, the country ladder, we see 5.235, 5.03. So that is still in the struggling category. The child is not happy with that. And moving on to the happiness, we also see... They disclose information in the questionnaire. We have highly trained um, field workers that can unpack the questions. So they, yeah, they do this. So it's of course underreported, probably. <laughs> How would they identify the perpetrators of, vic of, yeah. of sexual violence? So you can imagine that. The victims would normally not always self report, but it's yeah. not like the mm -hmm. perpetrators. It's yeah. weird. But. Yeah, we, the yeah. question is that you haven't beaten uh, someone, if you have her. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's the perpetrators of physical violence. Yeah. And something interesting about these results, let me not sp uh, spill the sweet part first. So <laughs> when we go to the linear mixed model, so now we are looking at the association with life satisfaction. So I've highlighted the important ones. So we see an association between sex and life satisfaction. Look at the number of meals. Higher number of meals are associated with higher life satisfaction scores. Look at religion variable. Look at also the country of origin with Burundian teachers reporting lower life satisfaction uh, scores compared to Congolese teachers. Definitely we are controlling for potential confounders. Let's see whether we shall obtain similar results for happiness. So country of origin, still a constant factor. Burundian teachers reporting lower happiness scores compared to Congolese teachers. Number of meals is still a constant factor. And now education comes in. So teachers who have completed secondary education are more happier to those who have completed university education. And then we still have religion variable with uh, some weak evidence of, uh, of an association. And when we move now to the violence variables, so when we see the association between life satisfaction and a victim of physical violence, we see some evidence of a negative association. And also we see some weak evidence of a negative association between victims of sexual violence and life satisfaction. Let's see whether we shall obtain similar results for happiness. So it now sweeps. So we no longer have any relationship between a victim of physical violence and happiness, but now 
we have perpetrators of physical violence having a borderline evidence of a negative association with happiness variable. And when we move to uh, the experience of trauma, it's very evident based on the summary statistics that the mean life satisfaction scores was lower than the mean happiness scores for teachers who had experienced trauma. And when we look at the crude and the adjusted associations, you will see this strong evidence of an association. So whether you adjust, you fail to adjust for any confounder or you adjust for it, there's still strong evidence. And look at that value, minus 0 0.41, this value here. If we were to translate this on a scale of one to 10, it will roughly be something like five something or five to six. So that means if we have two teachers with all with uh, constant factors, let's say they have the same age, number of children in the household, and that one teacher has not experienced trauma, and they have a variable, let's say, on a scale of one to 10, the life satisfaction is, let's say, eight. So the other, the other teacher, uh, the other teacher who has experienced trauma will be eight minus six, so will be on a scale of two. So there's quite a massive gap when it comes to the scores between those who have experienced trauma or PTSD and those who have not. And then, so on our discussion and conclusions, factors which are associated with life satisfaction, we have country of origin, we have uh, sex, we have number of children sleeping in household, we have number of meals consumed per day, and the experience of trauma. For happiness variable, country of origin is still a constant factor, number of meals consumed per day, trauma, and education status. And Burundian teachers, they are on average less satisfied, they are less happier, and they reported the highest case of trauma. As Julia mentioned, Congolese teachers came into the camp even as early as 1996 when the camp was established. But now Burundian uh, refugees, they came recently and they're the ones who experienced violence recently. So th those traumatic experiences are still very fresh in their minds and that's why we see the results we are seeing. An interesting result, the males reported higher cases of being victims of physical violence and victims of sexual violence. So that could be that females in the camp are underreporting these cases. And this could be a very good example of differential misclassification due to responder bias. Because females fear of a reporting or reporting these cases for fear of victimization and stigmatization. And victims of violence are recorded uh, lower levels of subjective well-being and also victims of physical violence were predominantly from Burundi. One important result that I need to highlight is uh, out five in 10 victims of physical violence were perpetrators of physical violence. And one in 10 victims of sexual violence were perpetrators of physical violence. So in case you didn't pick anything today, just remember <laughs> Caroline and Julia say in their research, they found that higher number of meals were associated with higher life satisfaction scores and higher subjective well-being. And life satisfaction is associated with, and it has a negative association with being a victim of physical violence and a victim of sexual violence. For happiness, a perpetrator of physical violence and a victim of sexual violence. And all the teachers who experienced violence reported lower levels of subjective well-being and experience of trauma was a strong determinant of subjective well-being. And also Burundian teachers reported higher cases of trauma and lower levels of subjective well-being. So the limitations of our study is we have used the linear mixed model. So on a linear regression scale, it has this tendency of predicting values which are outside the, the range. And also the homoscedasticity of variants can be, of the residuals can be violated. So what we can use is, we can use the ordinal logistic regression, but now it will be a trade-off with clustering. We can still maintain the scale, but we'll have that trade-off. And our data, it was cross-sectional study and also longitudinal, so it was more prone to selection bias. And we have already mentioned about this differential misclassification, and it will also be important to have other variables being included in our data set so that it can explain some of the results we are seeing. So um, I won't explain much, but I'll go to this last slide here. If the conference was held here today, no one will attend here. <laughs> we'll all stay in our homes. But this is a class in Nyarugusu refugee camp, and uh, Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you.